Hello everyone, this is a slightly different video. In this video I will be responding or debunking a Facebook post that I saw and I thought this might be a somewhat fun format that I might do a few times from now on where I respond to either misconceptions or false facts that I find posted online or stupid concepts I find posted online. It's not always gonna be debunking or responding to something stupid. I might also respond to just uh, serious questions but for now it is. Now I've built a very quick and dirty launcher to get this demonstration into orbit, but you can still uh, watch it get into orbit while I uh, give this little introduction. Now I found this post on Facebook about if you fired a bullet at the sun from Earth orbit, of course without specifying exactly what type of Earth orbit, at 1500 feet per second, or roughly 500 meters per second if you use a reasonable system of measurement, but that's uh, basically the same thing, then it would take 10.4 years to reach the sun, which is pretty much nonsense. Uh, whoever made that image clearly went to Wikipedia, looked up the distance between the Earth and the sun at some random time, because it actually changes between apoapsis and periapsis, but uh, that was apparently just simply ignored here, but it's a very small variation anyways, so that's kind of okay. And then they took the speed of a somewhat average bullet at 500 meters per second and divided that distance by that speed and got a time, which is reasonable if you have to do with small distances traveled on Earth, but shows that whoever made this has no idea about spaceflight, orbital mechanics, astrophysics, or anything related to this topic. Apparently the Earth and the Sun are standing still and gravity doesn't exist. Now I will use Kerbal Space Program for demonstrative purposes here. Now let me clarify, I know that Kerbal Space Program is not an accurate physics simulation. I am not using it to prove or test anything, I am just using it as a visualization. This has come up a few times in the plain unconveyable discussion. Now the point of this video is not to use Kerbal Space Program to test or prove anything. I am studying aerospace engineering, I have studied orbital mechanics for years, I have studied basic Newtonian kinematics for years, and I kind of know what I'm talking about. I hate appealing to authority and I'm not really an expert, but since it seems unnecessary to point this out sometimes, I do know what I am talking about. I do know orbital mechanics and the point of this video is actually to use this post as a sort of excuse or a fun uh, background to provide some examples of orbital mechanics for you. I may go more into detail in the uh, physics and mathematics explanation behind orbital mechanics later on. For now I'll just say that I know that the Kerbal Space Program is far from a perfect or accurate physics simulation, I know that this is not the solar system but the Kerbal system and that Kerbal patches conics and does not accurately simulate and body physics, but for these purposes, for these visualizations, I have checked that the idea in question is accurately visualized with Kerbal Space Program in this specific case. Now I have actually scaled the bullets, I use a small sort of rocket craft that I jettison from the main probe in this experiment to represent a bullet. I have scaled the delta V, so we all know that the Kerbal system is basically a scaled down version of our solar system and things are usually one tenth as large and the orbital velocities and escape velocities are generally roughly one third of what we may know from our system. So I have scaled these bullets to have one third of the delta V of the uh, muzzle velocity of relatively high speed bullets which go at somewhere 900 to 1000 meters per second, so these have a delta V of roughly 300 meters per second, which is actually higher than the speed of the bullet in the Facebook post which was at roughly 500 meters per second or scaled down roughly 160 meters per second, which is actually to the benefit of the post due in this case, but it's still not enough to save that post, and it's actually pretty far from enough. Now as you can see at first, uh, if you just randomly fire from low Earth orbit, or in this case low Kerbin orbit, at the Sun, what you'll do is just slightly vary the orbit of the bullet relative to your orbit. If you're in low Earth orbit, this will only slightly vary the uh, trajectory of the orbit. The bullet will go upwards and towards the Sun at first relative to you, 
But ridiculous slowly compared to the orbital velocity of you or even the orbital velocity of Earth. And as it goes up, it will slow down due to gravity, then it will lose centrifugal force because it is slowed down and will essentially fall back into Earth, as you can see here, and re-enter Earth's atmosphere after around one half or three quarters of an orbit on the night side of Earth. The best result you could achieve in low Earth orbit would be to fire at morning or dawn when the sun is in a roughly prograde direction, assuming you're in an equatorial orbit, which is also to the benefit of the poster. And so you're firing prograde, which means that you're still in a stable orbit. You've increased the apogee, but um, the perigee is still at your current altitude, roughly. So you're still in a stable orbit, the bullet will not re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, but it's still in an Earth orbit, a now slightly eccentric and slightly bigger Earth orbit, which is slightly slower and takes longer, so it will fall behind the Earth spacecraft, but it's not gonna reach the Sun still. Now the next thing we can do to uh, benefit our poster is to say, Okay, maybe it's not low Earth orbit, maybe it's a very high Earth orbit, maybe just inside the sphere of influence of Earth, or just outside the sphere of influence of Earth. That doesn't really make that huge a difference here anymore. If it's just outside Earth, but still orbiting the Sun along with the Earth, then what you'll get is also not really hitting the Sun. Now the bullet can at least reach escape velocity from the Earth. At this distance escape velocity is relatively low and it is basically already outside the sphere of influence. So it can get into its own orbit around the Sun, but no matter how we fire it, if we fire it directly towards the Sun or if we go about it a bit more clever and fire it retrograde in its Sun orbit, we end up with a slightly varied orbit around the Sun with a lower periapsis, but it's still not gonna hit the Sun. And even if the spacecraft itself now slows down its solar orbit and lowers its periapsis into the Sun, as long as it doesn't actually hit the Sun, now the delta V's we're talking about here are huge, we're talking about the uh, orbital velocity of the Earth. So some 29 kilometers per second, or to put that into the system of measurement of the original post, about a hundred thousand feet per second. And the Sun is really far away, so even though it is large in size, relative to the distance it's relatively small and so a hard to hit target. It's really surprisingly hard to push anything into the Sun, you'll have to slow down all this orbital velocity. So even now, if we slow down our spacecraft, if we fire a retrograde or if we fire into the Sun, the bullet will only really hit the Sun if the spacecraft itself was already falling into the Sun, and it doesn't quite have enough fuel to achieve that. But as you can see, even if it's close, the bullet's own speed doesn't make a huge difference in this. As you can also see, of course, as the periapsis approaches the Sun, or Kerbal in that case, the time to periapsis actually goes down, obviously, since it is still 180 degrees away, it is still the other side of the orbit, but the orbit is now getting smaller, uh, its, its semi-major axis is getting reduced as the periapsis approaches the Sun and approaches the apoapsis, and so following Kepler's laws, the orbital period is also reduced, and with it of course also half the orbital period or the time towards the other side of the orbit. And that started out at half a year, and it's actually kind of obvious. If you looked at an object at the same distance from the Sun as the Earth, but not moving around the Sun like the Earth, but rather just uh, standing still at that distance, it will fall into the Sun, pulled by the Sun's gravity, and this will take much shorter than a year, obviously, because the Sun's gravity at this distance is enough to pull the Earth all the way around itself within one year. It accelerates the Earth to curve around it full circle within one year, and as you get closer, the gravity gets even stronger. And of course, we can actually precisely calculate how long a still-standing object would need to start falling into the Sun and actually hit the Sun. We know the circular orbital period at this distance is one year, that is the orbital period of the Earth, and a few minor factors aside, we can do a rather good estimate using uh, Kepler's laws. 
Now if we lower our periaxis into the sun, which we do by standing still, which gives us an eccentricity of 1 and a periapsis distance of 0, the semi major axis is now half that of the Earth's orbit around the sun, and so following Kepler's law, the orbital period being proportional to the cube of the square root of the semi major axis, we'll now have to basically multiply 2 with the square root of 2, which gives us roughly 2.8. We'll have to add another factor of 2, because this is not one orbit, this is half an orbit, the distance from the apoapsis to the periapsis. We won't be coming up from the other side and going back to apoapsis, we're just falling into the sun. So it's half an orbit, or half an orbital period, so another factor of 2 that makes it 5.6, so, falling into the Sun from the same distance that the Earth is from the Sun, but from a still stand, would take about one 5.6th of a year, or a little bit over two months, not 10.4 years. And, of course, additionally, you're firing the bullet into the Sun, which doesn't give much difference, but it's making the time shorter, not longer. So, if it ever was possible to fire anything into the sun from anywhere near the Earth, it would take a little over two months and not 10.4 years. As for firing a rifle bullet, even from a much faster rifle from Earth orbit, even from a very high Earth orbit, or even from just outside the Earth's sphere of influence, it won't hit the sun. That's impossible, because you'd have to counter the Earth's orbital velocity, and that is 29 kilometers per second, much faster than any rifle around. So the verdict on that post is basically wrong. Now, I hope you kind of enjoyed this video, despite it basically being a rant or reaction, a format I don't necessarily like, because it is basically based on reacting to other people being wrong, which, I mean, I like correcting or helping people who have questions, but I don't really like basically profiting of other people's mistakes. But I hoped I managed to mix in some actually interesting explanation about the actual physics behind orbital mechanics, which might have made this video entertaining or interesting beyond just ranting over a wrong Facebook post. Now this format is still new and somewhat changing. I might find more things or like concepts or misconceptions that I would like to correct or comment on, and I hope that in the future I can mix in even more actually useful independent information about physics. Of course, if you have any suggestions for uh, concepts or misconceptions to put right, or just general questions about spaceflight, aviation, or physics, I will answer them as soon as I find the time. I still hope you found this clarification somewhat interesting, and as always, thanks for watching.